Dracunculiasis, or guinea worm disease, is on the verge of eradication. According to the Carter Center, only 13 provisional human cases of the disease were reported worldwide in 2023. Dracunculiasis is a crippling, parasitic, neglected tropical disease transmitted mostly when people drink stagnant water contaminated with parasite-infected water fleas. The disease is rarely fatal, but infected people become non-functional for weeks and months. For more insight, I'm joined by Adam Weiss, a director of the Guinea Worm Eradication Program at the Carter Center in Atlanta. Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. So Guinea Worm is a neglected tropical disease. Uh, tell, tell us about the impact of this uh, specific disease, because NTDs are a group of diseases, but uh, talk to us about Guinea worm and how it has been a public health problem. So you characterized it very well, that you get infected when you drink contaminated water. So somebody or an animal infects a water source, and most people in this world happen to drink from stagnant water. And so you pick up the infection, a year later, that worm will emerge from your body. And it's not just any worm, it's a one meter long worm that looks similar to a piece of spaghetti. And this worm emerges through a painful blister and it can take about four to six weeks to remove. Uh, there's lots of pain, fever, you're unable to go to work, to school. Uh, a woman in South Sudan even mentioned that it's worse than childbirth. And of course, most stoic men will even be brought to tears because of the pain. Wow. Uh, as you're aware, in 1986, there were an estimated three and a half million people with the disease each year, and that was impacting tens of thousands of communities. And most of the time, those communities were very remote, beyond the reach of their uh, national health systems. And the Guinea Worm Program has really helped to bridge those gaps. So, Adam, last year, 13 cases were reported. Where do we stand now in terms of eradication? Because it's been a while, we've been hearing that it's on the brink of eradication. Carter Center have uh, released a report on it. Where do we stand and what are the remaining challenges? So we are just at 13 human cases last year and we expect to have less than that in 2024. That's across countries like Chad, South Sudan, Cameroon and Mali. And on a planet of 8 billion people, certainly that's a historic feat. But really, that's all because of the ownership at the community level, uh, which is led by community volunteers. And they engage their fellow community members on a number of different interventions to stop transmission. And we are at that proverbial last mile or last kilometer. Uh, but we also know the end game of eliminating a disease from the world, eradicating it. Uh, is a difficult challenge. And so there's kind of four key challenges that I'd highlight. One is we don't have a vaccine or therapeutic. So we don't have a tool like polio or other diseases have to help stop transmission. We don't have diagnostics. Uh, and the program is, you know, has made so much success and so much impact from 3.5 million people in the mid 1980s to only 13 last year that it, it becomes a, a lower priority when countries already have strained health systems with very limited resources. And the last one is that we have seen in recent years the occurrence of guinea worm in domestic dogs and domestic cats, uh, where we had not seen infections um, in, a, in a meaningful way in the past. And so a guinea worm in any host is, you know, needs to be dealt with or it can come back into the human population. And so getting to eradication also helps protect uh, the human population in the long term. And speaking of long term, so beyond eradication uh, immediately, what are the long term uh, strategies for surveillance to ensure that uh, a guinea worm does not reemerge in communities that have been successful in combating it? Well, once we get to zero, then we can rest assured that it will not research, but you rightfully pointed out surveillance is critical. So right now, the global program supports more than 10,000 communities in the endemic countries with a workforce of more than 30,000 men and women volunteers that are helping to prevent future outbreaks. But those are really the bedrock of the surveillance system. Uh, and so as we move forward, making sure that surveillance is integrated at a national level, which is already done uh, by ministries of health, 
but then also encouraging people to come forward if they have signs or symptoms of the disease. So if you think about the smallpox eradication program, they had a global cash reward at the end game. And that's likely something that the okay. Global Guinea Worm Eradication Program will also uh, employ uh, to help make sure that there are no infections. 